Hello and welcome to this video. So this is the final video in the series. I just wanted to give a very quick recap of the things that you should be able to do now that you've done this series and also a, re a little overview of the system actually that, that I use with the results I've had so far this year. So starting off with the things that you can do, I mean, you've done a huge amount. I've looked back to over the videos and it's actually a lot more than I thought I would end up doing when I started doing the course. So you're able to request pretty much from any API. It doesn't need to be Oanda, but you're able now to load in historical data from any API that provides historical data. And there are a lot of them. You've learned to be able to plot data, so lines, candles, all things like that. And you've learned more critically, I think, to be able to analyze data. That means that you've learned to set up uh, different ways of backtesting certain strategies. We've done a simple example and a slightly more complicated example, but I think you've got enough information in there to pretty much test any strategy you'd like to test. You just have to build it up yourself. I think critically you've learned how to calculate indicators. Now we did quite a few of them and that should have set you up to be able to calculate any kind of indicator that you like. We've been able to set up a live bot. I would say it's very much a prototype of a live bot. Obviously I kept emphasizing during the coding of it that you need to add in some robustness to it, but to all intents and purposes, we've got the basics and skeleton to really set up something that can, can run quite well. We covered deployment to the cloud, more or less, in a video, which is probably the worst one I've done, but we managed to get through uh, deploying the bot onto a cloud. And also how to create yourself uh, a web-based dashboard as well, which I think is something that's quite uh, quite critical to uh, being able to effectively automate your trading. And I've put the last line, which I guess you've gathered from my opinion throughout the course, that you'll realize fairly quickly through the analysis that all these technical indicators are a load of rubbish as far as trading decisions concerned. So moving on then to my infrastructure that I actually use in real life for my trading. Now I don't use the OANDA API and I'm not brilliant at putting these things together in an easy way to understand them. But I've tried to sort of schematically describe what goes on in my own real life trading. So let's just uh, walk through it and see if I can uh, make some kind of sense of what I've written down here. So the whole trading process runs off these two squares here or these two orange ones here. There are two main bots, let's say, that trade. One is one that does what I call very short term trading. So that's trades that really only last five minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. And in some cases, really 30 seconds. And then there's the medium term bot, which generally say the trades will last probably anything up to around five days. It's very rarely that I have anything open over a weekend. I do in terms of my private manual trades, but not uh, not controlled by the bots. So there are two bots running in parallel. Then alongside these bots, there are what's known as a profit controller and a trade controller. So you've seen a little bit with the trade manager of the kind of concept behind that, except these are quite a bit more complicated. So the profit controller's job really is to manage the entire account. So the performance of me personally, manually, and also the performance of the short and medium term bot. And what I mean by manage is, if there's a certain amount of money made unexpectedly or there's a certain shift or something strange going on, it actually has the ability to shut everything down and prevent anything being put on in terms of trades or anything like that. And it's also something that can be accessed by me, which I'll come to via an administration application where I can actually adjust exactly what the bots are doing and aiming for. I then have a trade controller, which is something that behaves a bit like the profit controller, but actually controlled trades uh, individually trade by trade. Now here it might be do something like maybe adaptive so where you have trailing stops and things like that and in fact now, now I mention it the profit controller also does that kind of trailing concept also for overall profit but it manages trades on a trade by trade basis there's quite a lot of logic inside the bot for um, looking at trying to follow uh, trends and momentum with different trades and the trade controller will do this but these two work independently the more powerful one being the profit controller which is like I said able to just close everything down and open and close things independently. What I also have then on the right hand side is two main apps. One is an admin app. So that's a web based app where I can actually go in and change various settings and do things live. This is kind of essential if you're in the supermarket or something and something exceptional happens on the markets or something goes wrong, God forbid, with a bot and you get an SMS telling you we're not working. I can quickly go onto a web portal into an app and 
make some changes to some settings and things like that. And then alongside that, but separate, there's an iOS, Android and web-based app, which is written in React Native, which is pretty easy to, to do, which is simply a viewer, which gives lots of statistics and things on the screen to check how, how things are up and running. It should be said that inside these controllers here as well are some email and SMS alerting as well. So if there are any problems detected in the logs or anything, these controllers here actually manage that and send to my phone and uh, to the to the apps um, various warnings and things. So in the middle here we have some databases. So there's the live database. So the live database is taking live prices or being filled with live prices from a script which streams prices live for all of the things that could possibly be traded. The actual decisions to trade are made by the, the bots themselves. As well as feeding the uh, the bots and also the profit and trade controller, the live pricing database also feeds a learning database, which I'll come into in a minute. And this live database isn't simply the live stream prices, but it's also a database of some various, let's say, statistical um, numbers calculated also from the live prices as well. Alongside that, there's something that's streaming, much like you've seen actually, but from a different API, the candles, pumping them into a historical database. Again, calculating lots of stuff on that, so it's not just the prices, and that feeds, in this case, the medium term bot. The short term bot only runs off the, uh, the live price database, and it also feeds a learning database. And then quite interestingly, we have what I've called Scraper here. So there are a few scripts collected together inside this box here. And they run onto various websites and collect the economic news. So economic news from you know Reuters, from some of the Forex websites and things like that. Just reading in the information, any APIs that are available and trying to assimilate also Reddit and Twitter and things like that and trying to assimilate information that's going on. And this all gets pumped into an events database. And this events database is also read by the bots that are running there as well. And the objective there really is to try and identify where exceptional events might be occurring or something like this. And they're all pumped in here. And they're also then archived into what I've called the learning database. So the last part of the setup then is that there's this modeling. I mean, it's a small box, but it's years worth of code. But essentially the learning database uh, is feeding then modeling scripts. You've always got new ideas of models. And then when you build up these models, you test them. And then there's a simulation database, which is a big infrastructure behind all the modeling, which simulates different um, scenarios and parameters and things like that, and tries to come up with what might be reasonable trading strategies. So this infrastructure wasn't built, uh, obviously, in a couple of weeks or a day. Um, you've seen in the course most of the basics to be able to build something like this up. Uh, it's not perfect. It's written by me, so by definition it's not perfect, but it seems to work. In terms of deployment, it's actually all deployed on the cloud. It's, it's not on DigitalOcean. It's on another uh, cloud provider. Um, most of the boxes that you see here are processes. They are normally running on separate machines just to really give full computing capacity available, but each one can be seen as a, an individual process so they don't run under the same script or thread or anything like that. The other thing I should mention is the bots themselves, they, tra they trade with multi-threading, so anything they're dealing with and trading is traded on a separate thread so I don't end up with things blocking or anything like that. And then the last thing I want to show is just the results uh, so far this year from the bot. The bot tends to trade on a, a Monday to Friday basis. As I said, things rarely stay open for the bot over the weekend. And what you're seeing here is the percentage returns of the total balance of the trading account. So if you see 4.8 and the trading account is 100,000 euros, that means in that week that it's made a profit of 4,800 euros, for example. So we started trading on the 11th of January. So I don't usually like taking the first week of the year because my experience is either extremely quiet and nothing happens and the bot tends to lose money then or crazy things happen. But anyway, it lost minus 0.6%. And then you can see that uh, we've had some really unexpectedly very, very high winning weeks in the middle of February. And more recently, so the week beginning the 12th, so that was actually last week, we got 1.9% back. The week before was actually a minus 0.8%. The week beginning the 29th of March was around Easter and it didn't trade. I, t I tend to take it off around major holidays and things like that because again, strange things happen. The markets go quiet, not everything is available to be traded and it, it kind of messes things up. 
But otherwise, you can see it's had reasonable returns, I would say, as a percentage of the account uh, so far this year. Whether it continues this way or not, I don't know. So just to finish then, I want to say how the bot actually trades. And there are two critical things. One, it doesn't use indicators. It doesn't use anything of any kind of education material I've seen. And I can pretty much assume from people I've talked to who trade successfully, that's the correct approach. What it does do, and this is no great secret because this is how most successful traders trade, it trades based on portfolios. So it doesn't look at, say, the euro, Japanese yen and trade the euro, Japanese yen because it thinks it's going to go up. It'll look at a portfolio of items and trade those items as a basket of things to be traded rather than individually. So that's it then. I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch. If you've got through all of this video, that means you've spent quite a lot of time listening to me and watching me fumble about trying to spell things correctly in code. But I really, really hope, as I said right at the beginning of the course, that you've learned something that this will help with your algorithmic trading. I've had a lot of emails and really nice comments, and probably I'm going to make a more in-depth course covering more indicators, more trading strategies and also fleshing the bot out a bit. Uh, but I'll make that probably on Udemy then because this takes me a lot of time and um, the feedback has been positive. So maybe I'll, I'll get a course together on Udemy. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and all the best for your trading in the future.